let's continue with the brain and look at the cerebellum. Now remember the cerebellum is that small portion of the brain that's found posterior and somewhat inferior to the back inside that occipital bone. So it is attached to the brain stem, posterior to the back, especially to the pons, which remember is one part of the brain stem right there in the center. The cerebellum does have two large lateral hemispheres, left and right. See something similar to that with the cerebrum. Here you're going to plan and learn complex movements. It's got a lot to do with learning complex movements. We talk about using skeletal muscle. Right here in the center, you see the vermis has to do with fine motor coordination. That way you don't move in straight lines, but the muscles work together to give a smooth fluid motion. And then these bumps here are the flocculonodular lobes used for balance and eye movement. You can also see here on the cortex, the outer region, there are these little folds or ridges called the folia. <clears throat> you could run your thumb over them just like sheets of paper. And the white matter to the inside called the arbor vitae resembles something like a tree. So if you look to the inside right here on this view, you can see that structure shown there. Inside the cerebellum, you'll find these neurons called Purkinje cells, some of the very largest you'll find anywhere in the central nervous system and have somewhere around 200,000 synapses. So they communicate with many other neurons and cells of the body, and these are all inhibitory. These are the only cerebellar cortex neurons that send axons to the cerebellar nuclei. And there's somewhere around a billion neurons in the cortex, more than what you'll find in the cerebrum. So here you can see the two large lateral hemispheres. These little bumps here are the flocculonodular lobes. You can't see the vermis from the anterior view. You'd have to be looking more from the back. There's a little foley or the ridges seen left and right. There's the pituitary gland, somewhat anterior to this. And looking over here with the brain stem, there's midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata. And right here at the base of the cerebellum, you'll find the fourth ventricle, one of these four fluid filled cavities and spaces seen inside the brain. And again, if you look at this myelinated area to the inside, it looks sort of like a tree, that's the arbor vitae. So looking at some of these cerebellar functions, again, the flocculonodular lobes are largely about balance and eye movement. Those two things largely go together. The vermis, a little medial portion in between the two hemispheres about posture, movement, fine motor coordination. That way you get smooth, very fluid movements. And the large lateral hemispheres, the biggest portions work with that cerebrum to plan, practice, and learn complex movements. Now look deep to the very center of the brain at the diencephalon. Again, you had cerebrum all in here. There's that little cerebellum to the back. Here's your brain stem. So that diencephalon is the center region. Surrounding it, you can see this thick region right here called the corpus callosum. A lot of axons crossing over from one hemisphere of the brain to the other. Look at the different parts and components of the diencephalon. The thalamus is the bulk. Look at this little center region right here. It looks a little bit round. It has that little dot where there's a connection between the two halves of the thalamus. That's the bulk of the diencephalon. Sub always means beneath or below. So below it's going to be the subthalamus. Beneath it's going to be the hypothalamus, which has a lot to do with the pituitary. And then more posterior to the back is the epithalamus region. But going back to the thalamus, again, it has two large lateral sections, left and right. It's surrounded by the third ventricle, <clears throat> which we'll see the ventricles further along. And the thalamus is a major sensory relay center. Just about all senses pass through this region. There's some motor function, mood, emotion, sensory, other things in there with it. Looking at the subthalamus, this is all about controlling motor function. It contains some of the subthalamic nuclei. There are parts of the red nuclei and substantia nigra. And lots of nerve tracts, lots of axons, ascending and descending, up and down towards the spinal cord. Looking at the epithalamus, you'll find a region called the pineal gland. They talk about how this may influence sleepiness. There's a hormone from this region called melatonin, regulated by what's called photoperiod, how long the days are. The days get shorter as you move towards winter, more melatonin is released, and it's believed that tends to slow animals down. And at the same time, it inhibits reproduction. So when people talk about the biological clock, they also mean this pineal gland because it influences when major events start and stop, and puberty is one of those. The abenular nucleus within the epithalamus has to do with emotional and visceral, in other words, like gut responses to odors. Something makes you sick just by smelling it. It's what they mean by visceral response. 
Looking at the mammillary bodies, they have similar reflexes, olfactory reflexes being those with smell and emotional responses to uh, odors. So this hypothalamus is the inferior, lowest portion of that diencephalon. And right at the bottom of it, there's a stalk of tissue called the infundibulum that connects it to the pituitary gland. And through that infundibulum, there are two very special connections between that hypothalamus and that pituitary. You'll see that in the endocrine system. But with the hypothalamus, it gets input from the viscera. Think about those organs in the abdominal pelvic cavity. Also from taste receptors, the limbic system, and so on down the line. There's lots of efferent, incoming signals in through these fibers to the brain stem, the spinal cord, and a lot of that's autonomic. And you'll also see a connection to that pituitary, especially the posterior. It's just an extension of the hypothalamus itself. So this is very important when it comes to mood, emotion, thirst, hunger, sexual pleasure, rage, fear, and many other functions. So the hypothalamus has to do with many things involved with the body. A lot of those are autonomic. A lot of those are endocrine. You'll see that with hormones further along. A little bit with skeletal muscle. This is the temperature regulating center of the brain. It's the hunger center, which is what the satiety center is. It's the thirst center. And again, it influences emotions, sleep, wake, sexual development because of it controlling the onset of puberty and many other things.